tonight about the dangers of campfires and barbecues after a spate of incidents across the region, including the biggest blaze on Forest Commission land in East Anglia. That fire tore through seven hectares of forest in Norfolk and burned for five days, stoked by underground peat. Natalie Gray has the story. A campfire and a barbecue, for many, the perfect summer outdoor adventure. But when they're not properly extinguished, the consequences can be devastating. Seven hectares of Forestry Commission land at Hevingham in Norfolk have been destroyed. A hundred firefighters with 20 appliances spent five days trying to put the fire out. And all because of this campfire. Very saddened at the devastation, really. Yeah. It just, everything's dead, sterilised. What does it mean to this large part of the forest? Um, a recovery of 20 years just to bring it back to some sort of habitat for wildlife. The challenge with peat is that because it goes so deep, uh, the fire will track along it. And the fact that it goes so deep and burns for so long, sometimes months at a time, means that um, you can um, be coming back for weeks on end just to put, put out these enduring hotspots. It's terrifying how quickly fire tears through woodland and heath. Just look at these pictures from Ipswich two weeks ago. Within minutes, this part of Rushmere Heath and Ipswich was well alight with flames leaping 60 feet in the air. Foxes, birds and other wildlife had no time to escape. And like the majority of similar fires across the region this summer, it was deliberate, started by children. Not that we've yet to see scenes like this, from the boiling summer of 1976 when fires raged across our region. Meanwhile, the pine trees at Hevingham will all have to be felled. Love the public in the woodlands, but please don't have a fire. <laughs> this is the result. So keep away from forests and the countryside and make sure your fires are well and truly out. Natalie Gray, Anglian News, Norfolk. Right, do stay with us this Friday evening. Still to come, the urban art form, but certainly dividing opinion. Um. Housing Minister Grant Shapps has announced plans to give villagers the power to create new homes, shops and businesses in their areas. Places like Elsing in Norfolk could benefit from the new programme, which will give people the freedom to approve local developments without a specific application for planning permission. Anna Pettifer reports. Think and you'll miss the tiny village of Elsing in Norfolk. With just a handful of houses, a pub and a shop, it's rural life like this that the government wants to protect. It says high house prices are driving people away from villages, but its new initiative, it claims, will sustain village life for generations to come. This is power to local people. We're going to be saying that for the first time, if you live in a rural area, maybe in a village or a parish, then you should have the right to decide if you want to build more houses in your patch. It could be affordable houses or houses for general use or even a convenience store, but we're going to give you the rights and the powers to do that in a brand new community right to build. Under the Right to Build initiative, villagers will be given the freedom to approve developments without council planning permission, but only if the community backs the plans in a local referendum. It's good to encourage in, um, in, uh, growth into the village because it will open the shops and the pubs are given more trade and bring more life into the village and the village communities are dying at the present time. Um, but then again, you can look on it as a bad sign that you're losing the identity of the village. I, I just think it's really, really important that people have to be in conurbations where there's facilities. And there isn't going to be any facilities fairly soon. Everything's closed. Um, it's a small village and it's a very quiet village. And this will probably mean that there'll be a lot more, um, perhaps a, an estate might be put up, which would threaten the environment of this, this village. But the idea has received a lukewarm welcome from some. The Campaign to Protect Rural England has said a more democratic approach to house building is welcome. However, bypassing the planning process is not the way to deliver it and any proposals should include proper planning scrutiny. The initiative is part of the Prime Minister's big society, giving more power to a local level and leaving small villages like Elsing with big decisions to make. Hannah Pettifer, Anglia News. 
Ed Miliband was in the region today as part of his bid to become the next leader of the Labour Party. The MP spoke to party members and trade unionists in Cambridge before going on to Norwich and Lowestoft. He said he wanted to talk to as many people as possible. I think that people lost a sense of what Labour stood for and what we believed. And we lost some people over tuition fees, we lost other people over civil liberties, we lost other people over their standards of living. And I think we've got to win all of those people back as a party. That requires really hard thinking, requires real listening, and it requires getting out and talking to members of the public. And that's what I'm here to do today. Hundreds of people attended the funeral service at Norwich Cathedral today for one of the region's best-known broadcasters. Roy Waller worked for BBC Radio Norfolk as a presenter and football commentator. He was 69. After being diagnosed with bowel cancer five years ago, he campaigned to make people more aware of the condition. Now, a Norfolk village has been singled out for special praise by a senior official helping to organise the Olympics in two years' time. Sir Keith Mills could have picked anywhere in the region to launch the London 2012 Open Weekend for East Anglia. He chose Heatherset near Norwich. Donovan Blake has been finding out why. The London 2012 Olympics may come too soon for these school children to compete in, but there's no shortage of excitement at Heatherset Junior near Norwich, with the Games just two years away. This is how I do my right now. The majority of the 240 pupils are involved in sport and leisure, both in and outside school. And whether or not their sport is featured at the Olympics, they're all looking forward to being part of it. It'd be really good and just to see how they swim and their technique and everything. Running, high jump, long jump, anything like that. Yeah. Not really into swimming. I like um, watching judo and um, I like watching football as well. Their sheer enthusiasm for the Games is mirrored across the village and prompted Sir Keith Mills, Deputy Chairman of the London 2012 Organising Committee, to accept an invitation to visit. Heatherset, per capita of population, are doing more things in their open weekend than I think any other town or city around the country. And I have to say, the east of England in particular have really got the message. More than 100 sporting and cultural events will be staged over the next two days across Norfolk, Suffolk, Essex and Cambridgeshire. Six will be staged in Heatherset alone. I put to the parish council about the possibility of Heatherset being included on the route of the 2012 torch relay. And we felt that by organising such a lot of events, uh, people in London would eventually sit up and take notice and we would get the village uh, on the map as it deserves, basically. And if that strength of interest is a guide, the region's contribution to the Games will be significant as we count down to July 2012. Donovan Blake, Anglia News, Heatherset. Monday in Heatherset. Now, some of Britain's best touring car drivers have been taking to the track at Snetterton in Norfolk. They've been taking part in a three-hour testing session ahead of the touring car races in August. Now, the meeting will be Snetterton's biggest car racing event of the season. Drivers from rival teams have been getting used to the twists and turns of the Norfolk track there.